Uh, this is the second time you've been in a film together, but the second time you haven't shared mm -hmm. scenes. You, you've all forgotten. What? Greetings, movie fans. You're all very welcome to The Big Review Ski with Omniplex Cinemas and my Omnipass. My name is Owen Doherty, and this week I am so excited to be joined by Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie of the movie review world. Oh. It's Justine Stafford and Roy Cashin. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's, I wow. appreciate that. Well, they must so be you, so... That would make you the Quentin Tarantino of the... Please don't ever say that ever again. Of the movie review world. <laughs> Please stop saying that. I don't want to be Quentin Tarantino. Well, it does explain why you keep asking me to take my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> does he always ask people to take his shoes off? No, he's got a foot thing. <gasps> what? Like he's... a fetish? Yeah. Oh, this I cannot be news this. to you. Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish. I didn't Sorry, say those two, words. Two seconds. That sounds Wait, libelous. Let me, let me just say, I've got a really good show coming up. We're going to have an in-depth feature, uh, a look at Quentin Tarantino's <laughs> foot fetish. We're going to take another look at how Danny DeVito and his foot fetish kind of links up with Quentin Tarantino's one as well. Plus, we've got the actual Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie, both people with feet. Mm -hmm. And we have reviews of some class films. So stay tuned and tickets to give away. Back to this thing. Quentin Tarantino mm. loves your feet. <laughs> Not specifically mine. I think it's more, uh, if I were to guess, I'd say he's a fan of females' feet. Mm -hmm. I've, like, you, you just I've got all their albums. Have this you heard this? Yes, I have heard this. You what? Can't, you have. can't have not yeah. heard this. I you, swear to God, you've this been is... A, you've been awake and alive, <laughs> alive. for a while. Yeah. 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 I, I, this is genuinely news. Is this breaking news? Do we need like a... Da, 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 you know, da, just da, think da, of like breaking any news, Tarantino film, there's, there's stuff about feet in it. Yeah, I've seen people with feet in his films. There's a whole thing in Pulp Fiction about... Foot oh, massage. the foot massage. There's a whole close-up on Uma Thurman's mm. Wiggle Your Big Toe. Yes. Oh, I'm uh, uh, And a third example, I can't. <laughs> and I can't. a third example. He's a big, massive close-up of two ladies' feet in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Interesting. So, this is fascinating. Oh, death proof. Her feet are all over the place. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with The Big Review Ski, oh, and please subscribe as well. Uh, if you would like to send us pictures of your feet. Uh, don't. No. Wait, don't do that. Send them I don't to want Quentin. He, send them to Quentin. He'll appreciate send them. them. to Quentin yeah. Tarantino. Yeah, don't send can, them to we us. We can forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can get in touch with us so, uh, on Twitter, at Big Review Ski, or on Joe Instagram or Facebook. And you can check out lots of movie reviews and interviews up on Joe as well. Um, right. Wow, we're off to a blistering start. Blistering Is that an start. attempt at a foot yeah. pun? No, I wasn't actually going to. Okay. No, nah, got nothing. That's <laughs> 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 um, No. Nah. Uh, so, yes, what have we got this week? Oh, yes, it's the big question, mm -hmm. first of all, on the bigger Ski. And for this week's big question, it's me. It's over to me. And for this big question, I'm actually just going to take out my pen here. Oh. Just got a couple of I... things to write down. What you you were saying it went missing. What do you I think did. About that? My pen was diamond heisted. There's been a heist. Uh, actually, I found it <laughs> lying in a bin. Do you want it? Oh. Do you want it back? You know you didn't find that lying in a no, bin. No, I stole it off your desk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Activate. There's no nib on it. But you're not treating the diamond right. Yeah, okay. no. Uh, I do like it. It's pretty heavy. Like there's yeah, weight. There's it's, weight. A prop, yeah. it's a proper like <laughs> diamond. <laughs> well, that too. But like it's a proper weapon. Um, so uh, I'm going to make some notes with this. But uh, obviously we're talking about Quentin Tarantino, his love of feet, and the fact that he is a brand new film, Once Upon a Time in dot, 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 Hollywood. Isn't that the way the title? It's Once Upon a Time dot, 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 in Hollywood. Oh, is it? Is that where the dot, dot, dots go? Yeah. Okay. Um, so <coughs> this is studio film number nine for Mr. Tarantino. Yes. He said he's only going to make ten. <laughs> he's only going to make eight. <laughs> so he's a liar. A liar. <laughs> uh, so he's going to make ten in total. Um, but I was just wondering, like, he's made so many iconic foot moments and other filmy moments over the years. And basically just wanted to know, what is your favourite Quentin Tarantino scene? Mm. Not film, uh, not line of dialogue, because he's obviously lauded for his writing ability as well. Um, and not everybody's a fan of his work, but you cannot deny mm. that he's made some of the most influential uh, films since he kicked things off with Reservoir Dogs back in the 90s, that he's just... He's definitely uh, just yeah had a huge influence in the world of filmmaking. So, um, yeah, what's your favourite scene uh, out of any of his films? But I thought that I would go first. So I'm going to tell you my answer first. That's nice that's of you. All right. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, you, Is it a close-up of feet? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, for 20 minutes. Um, 
so many to choose from, whether it was dialogue right. heavy mm -hmm. or action. Don't I'm not even it. going to name a, you know, a second or a third place, but the one that I went for and the reason I've picked this, uh, well, there's a couple of reasons, but I have gone for Inglorious Bastards, the opening scene of the film uh, with Christoph Waltz, or the first moment that we meet uh, his character, Hans Lander. And it's basically, uh, <laughs> I should have actually found out the name of the other actor in the mm. scene, but it's essentially, it, it's more of a one-man show. Um, and Christoph Waltz was a brand new actor to me at this time as well. I think, yeah, to everyone. Yeah, yeah and he delivers this incredible, uh, like it is a really well-written scene. And it's almost a monologue. There are some interjections from the other guy or some little parts of conversation. And it just introduces you to the quiet uh, and terrifying menace of Hans Landa, this uh, horrible, horrible Nazi. Not that there are nice Nazis, just this horrible person. Uh, who's Even as Nazis go, he's still As pretty Nazis yeah. go, he's a pretty nasty yeah. Nazi one. Yep. And uh, so he's on the hunt in this farmhouse uh, for Jews who are hiding, they're underneath the floorboards. And he goes off and he's talking about this and that, but, and you can see there's like the slow zoom there, just like the whole scene, the tension is rising and rising. And uh, even watching it back for this week's show, it just reminded of what a phenomenal mm -hmm. uh, scene it is. And that film, the way it is broken up into the chapters, like so many of Tarantino's films, there are brilliant ones like uh, In the Barn, but this one just, I think in terms of like a character introduction, an actor introduction, and I don't know, like Christopher Waltz has been brilliant in some other films as well, but I don't think he's ever been uh, quite as uh, scary as that. Can you win an Oscar? Can for you that an Oscar one? for this, yeah? For Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Just even watch it there without dialogue and how tense it makes you feel, like that alone is incredible, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it just kicks off the film in the most <clears throat> amazing way, giving you because he's he's so charming, mm -hmm. he's funny, and hugely multilingual. Oh, that's oh. It, yeah, because he speaks English in it, he speaks French, he speaks German, because mm -hmm. um, that's what multilingual means. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, no, it's just it's a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant character, yeah, and brilliantly acted as well. So uh, we take we look. Uh, yeah, I'm scared though. Yeah, mm. it's okay. Let's all hold my hand. Hold my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Now, my job dictates that I must have my men enter your home and conduct a thorough search before I can officially cross your family's name off my list. And if there are any irregularities to be found, rest assured there will be. That is unless you have something to tell me that makes the conducting of a search unnecessary. I might add also that any information that makes a performance of my duty easier will not be met with punishment. Actually, quite the contrary. It will be met with reward. And that reward will be your family will cease to be harassed in any way by the German military during the rest of our occupation of your country. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. You're sheltering them underneath your floorboards, aren't you? Yes. Point out to me the areas where they're hiding. Actually, connection with our big guests uh, this week are one of them, Brad Pitt, of course, who stars in Inglorious Bastards as well. Mm. Um, because don't forget, like, Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie are on the show. Yeah. The real Brad Pitt and the real Margot Robbie. Yeah. Okay. So Not their stunt just, doubles. No. Not their stand-ins. Not their feet doubles. Nothing like that. Now, though, it's over to Rory. What was your answer in your favourite Tarantino scene? Well, yeah, like, Brad Pitt is in... Inglorious Bastards, mm -hmm. and he isn't in the scene you picked, and he isn't in the scene I picked. Also okay, from Inglorious nice, Bastards. Nice segue, unbelievable. Actually, I think he's in the very start of it. Okay. 
It's the introduction and then the entire bar scene. Oh, so the one... The one that you mentioned. The one, oh, I, the one I was like, don't ever mention oh, the other oh, one. Oh, no, I'm so it. sorry. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> it's the bar scene from Inglorious Bastards where Michael Fassbender uh, is sitting next to a table full of soldiers who are playing... What's that name called? What's that? Is the name I don't game? Know. <laughs> the name game yes, where you yeah, write uh, nice. a character or a thing on your forehead and, mm. stuff and you have to guess who you are. Yeah, and he's there as, a, I guess, a double agent for the, the British Armed Forces. And he's there with Diane Kruger who is a, an actress, but she's also a double agent, uh -huh. or a triple agent, maybe. Um, and it's, again, it's just an incredibly tense scene set in a, in a very claustrophobic uh, setting. And everyone's multilingual again. It's just, it, these people are all just showing off that they can speak more than one language. Uh, yeah, and it starts off kind of nice and fun, and everyone's drunk, and then it just devolves into just, uh, oh, for five, ten minutes. The clip I picked has to be quite short because a lot of the film, a lot of the scene is not in English. So this is just the bit in English for listeners because I'm sure we do have a huge German contingent listening well, to the Well, the Big Rewski is syndicated to 43 countries around the world. Just, the, all, just the 43. Just the 43. And they all either speak English or uh, German. Oh, so I, could have, I could have left the whole clip it's in. It's fine. You'll know for next time. Yeah, yeah. You read, listen to the subtitles. Can you say that off Deutsch? Hören Sie die Hören. Subtitel? Hören the sub what? There we go. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Falls einer von euch vorhat, am Leben zu bleiben, werdet ihr sie auch erschießen lassen. Sieht so aus, als ob klein Max als Weise aufwächst. Wie traurig. Well, if this is it, old boy, I hope you don't mind if I go out speaking to kings. By all means, Captain. There's a special rung in hell reserved for people who waste good scotch. Seeing as I may be rapping on the door momentarily. I must say, Damn good stuff, sir. Now, about this pickle we find ourselves in. It would appear there's only one thing left for you to do. And what would that be? Another incredible scene. Justine, are we going to go for the triple whammy here? Did you go for Inglorious Bastards as well? I didn't. Okay, well, I was very, oh. very, very close to begging it just because I love BJ Novak. And there's a scene where he features at the start that I think is also any scene in any Tarantino film. Find me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like that. Yeah. Uh, I may have misinterpreted this question. Brilliant. I thought... Here's my favourite supersonic. <laughs> Segment. I'm no. really curious as to how you got how this did one you get this I one? thought it was our favourite closing scene in a Tarantino film. Oh. Yeah. You just added a word in. I did. I did do that. So, uh, that She's kind of proud of it. Of, I'm not at all proud. I'm embarrassed. Because I would have picked other stronger scenes. But, gotcha. um Scene that I went for. I think Tarantino's films, one of his strongest things as well is his soundtracks. Like mm, if I hear yeah. a song, I'm like, oh, that's from the Tarantino film. They're just incredible. But the uh, closing scene I went for is Django Unchained. Okay, so when Jamie Foxx lights up. Right. Big explosion. And you mm -hmm. know what they say in the films, you're not meant to look back. But he mm. looks back and he pulls it off because he is too cool. He's unbelievably cool in yeah. this film. Did, yeah. you, did you know he only got the role because Will Smith said no? I did know that. Oh, yes, I and I knew Someone, that because it yeah. was on the big review ski. Rory Cashin said it about Will Smith previously. All right. Yeah. So and go. I think that was, I actually don't think Will Smith would have played, uh, the I, part I mean, as it's well. hard to know, but I think, yeah, Jamie It's tough Fox. to imagine. Yeah. 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 Um, like Jamie's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, and thing is in it as well. Samuel L. Jackson? Samuel, yeah. No. Christoph. Yes, Christoph. Christoph, Christoph Waltz. And Christoph yeah. Waltz. Won an Oscar for this one as well. Yeah. Of course, phenomenal. So obviously, uh, Christoph Waltz, and I'm not sure actually if he's in, because we will get to the review of, once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if he's actually in that one as well. No. No? But obviously he's got a really good working relationship with uh, Quentin Tarantino as well. Presumably, down to Christoph Waltz's wonderful feet. 
Yes. So we let's take a wee look. <laughs> it's the only explanation. Uh, so this is a wee clip of basically Bad. what Jamie Foxx has been ridiculously cool. cool. Yeah. This could have been your answer for this, last week's question. It could have been. But it's not. It's not. I count six shots. I count two guns. You said in 76 years on this plantation, you've seen all manner shit done in But I noticed. You didn't mention kneecap. Oh, 76 years, Stephen. How many do you think you see come and go? Huh? 7,000? 8,000? 9,000? 9,999? Every single word that came out of Calvin Candy's mouth was nothing but horse shit. But he was right by one thing. I am that one in 10,000. You mother Oh, sweet Jesus, let me kill this You ain't gonna get away with this, Jango. They gonna catch your black ass. You gonna be on the wanted posters now. Everybody on is gonna be looking for you. You can run, but they gonna find your ass. And when they do, oh, I love what they gonna do to your ass. They ain't gonna just kill you. You done fucked up. This candy land. You can't destroy candy land. We've been here. There's always gonna be a candy land. <laughs> It is a phenomenal finish to a film. Mm -hmm. I'd be really intrigued to find out what your favourite Tarantino scene is. Though. Like Some <laughs> yeah, week we should ask that week. question some week as well. And you um, can give your favourite endings. Yeah, that that'll week. be perfect. We'll do I a do. little swap deal. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so interesting. Like Django Unchained and Glorious Bastard, nobody going for uh, some of his, like yeah. Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs Gosh. are probably considered mm -hmm. like his most iconic ones anyway. But uh, yeah, no shortage of... Uh, phenomenal scenes uh, from Quentin Tarantino. If you ask me this in a year, go on. I would say a scene oh. from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Unbelievable. So just what if I just asked you like? Well, I don't want to give anything away. Okay. I don't want to give right. anything away. A uh, year, so there's time to. Okay, gotcha. T T T. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So uh, <laughs> yes, let us know your favorite Quentin Tarantino films as well. Uh, we'll definitely have to do Tarantino quotes and everything as well, and soundtracks. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And feet. And feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, remember, keep those pictures coming. Don't. Uh, now it's time for the big trader on the bigger rescue. And for this week's big trader, it's over to Mr. Rory Cashin. Hi yo. How you doing? So horror, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know I'm, I'm in good company when I'm talking about enjoying uh, sure. scary movies. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen The Witch? The The Witch? Yeah, the that one. 10 yeah. itch. Have you seen it? No. Good. No. I know you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the next movie from the writer-director of that movie. His name is Dave Eggers. Can I, can I just say yeah. the trailer for that was scary enough for mm -hmm. me? For The Witch? For The Witch. Yeah. Which one? That um, one. Yeah, that, that was. And the trailer for this one... like. I, there was a lot where I had to like freeze frame and I was like, what is what happening there? What is happening here? Yeah. So it's The Lighthouse, which has begun to do the rounds in the festival circuit uh, in the States uh, and is getting such a tremendously positive reaction from horror fans who were, you know, like the same way that recently we've had uh, Midsummer and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff that's done really well on the, on the horror circuit. And this is Willem Dafoe and... Future Batman, Robert Pattinson, are two lighthouse keepers uh, on a very, very isolated lighthouse and they, uh, a storm comes in and they can't get off the island for an amount of time that isn't made abundantly clear. Uh, and over time, they start to go 
a bit doolally start to turn on each other and then some other stuff starts to happen uh that will yeah i don't know if i like i don't know because i haven't seen it but i really don't know having seen the trailer i'm so confused by what it potentially could be but i'm very excited at how scary it could be as well so okay that's I'm on, on board. Yeah. Except you won't go see Except it. Except I'm not. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at the incredibly, uh, like vague but scary Creepy. but exciting, yeah. kind but of existential intriguing. horror. Okay. It's really my bag. Yeah. When I'm not doing sexy space stuff, this is my bag. Yeah. Uh, this is the trailer for the lighthouse. Tell me, what's a timber man? want with being a wiki. Just looking to earn a living, just like any man. Starting new. On the run. Keeping secrets, are you? No, sir. Why don't you spill your beans? Yes, I know you were saying that whenever you were watching it, you had to freeze frame some mm. of the shots just to try and work out what exactly is going on there. Mm. There's one shot I did exactly the same thing. It's like as if there's like an octopus, a giant squid in the room, or a yeah. squid or something. I don't know if it's attacking them or if it's or if it's just them, there or it's there. What the crack is? Yeah, I feel um, there, there's a certain there's a certain horror writer. Uh, Lovecraft is his name, and cinema hasn't really captured his essence just yet because he's a bit more out there. If you ever heard like, he's, he's in South Park actually, a character called Cthulhu who's responsible for ending the world. Lovecraft uh, created him uh, and there's definitely a Lovecraft vibe going on there when you see the giant squid just pop up. You're like, what? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. what the heck's going on? So uh, what is the heck going on? What is the... I haven't seen it, mate. Release date? Oh, uh, October. Of this year? Halloween. Of this year. Okay, so oh. that's pretty soon. So yeah. soon mm. enough. Um, yeah, we don't have long to wait. Pretty decent uh, October for horror films. Well, a couple of months coming up for horror films. But this one, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there's a lot to, yeah. to process there. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Willem Dafoe uh, and nautical-based films because he was in Steve Zizou, Life Aquatic. He sure was. Huge fan of that. So it's good to see him back at sea. Uh, and Robert Pattinson continuing his, like, it's just, do we just forget about it? Like, you know what I mean? He's moved so far away from everything Twilight yeah. related now because mm. it's just, I know he was determined to do that, but this is just another step in the... I think it's so funny that, like, people are still hung up on that. Yeah. Like, nobody is giving Zac Efron yeah. any shit for High School no. Musical. For High School Musical. Yeah. Oh, can I admit something? I haven't seen any of the High School Musical oh, films. Oh, you're missing Get in line. It. You're missing it. None of them. No. How many? Three? Oh, three. There's three. I've only seen two. Yeah. Are they? Oh, as <laughs> I know. Carly's a film critic. <laughs> <laughs> Are they s as scary as the lighthouse looks? Probably scarier when you see the lack of, Thomas? you know, well, just cinema. The lack of being cinema. Made. Yeah. The yeah. lack of cinema being made. <laughs> the on lack screen. of cinema being made. Yeah. Um, so lighthouse out in October. <clears throat> uh, looks like Pattinson and Defoe on top form, and as you said, Rory already getting uh, spectacular reviews, which is. Good news all around. Exciting. Okay, looking forward to that. Uh, now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting oh. for, uh, just to hear Rory bang on about how class it was to meet Brad Pitt mm -hmm. and Margot Robbie. Uh, as we said, once upon a time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's brand new film <laughs> is released in Irish cinemas this week. The stars are two of the stars of the film uh, and two of the biggest stars in the world. And Brad Pitt one of the biggest stars of all time. Yeah. Like it just, it doesn't Incredible. get bigger than Brad Pitt. Or uglier. Or uglier. So yeah. disgustingly just ugly. The pair I mean, of them. I have never met a single person who's found either of these people attractive. Yeah. So you were in the room with these two ugly people and how intimidating <laughs> was that? <laughs> uh, fairly intimidating. Like even in advance, like, I, like whenever I do Interviews is always like, ooh, it's yeah. exciting and it's nervous and ooh, what if what if they're great and we get on really well? What if they're terrible? <gasps> and I want the floor to open up and eat me alive because mm. this is not going well. It happens. It's happened. Um, but this was not that. This was they were so laid back and chill. 
Beautiful. And just really, really up for the laugh. Especially Margot. She is like, if she senses there's something to be... A better crack. Be, yeah, she's, yeah. Like, yeah. She's, yeah. she's on it. Uh, so I knew that already because you had spoken to her previously for well, Suicide Squad, which we'll get to. Yeah. We'll get well, to that. But it was... It was, I wasn't sure about Brad because I was like, it's Brad Pitt. He, he can do he, what he wants. He, yeah, he, he, he could do he say and make be whatever effort. he wants. No, yeah. he absolutely doesn't. Um, but he was as nice an interviewee as you could hope for. Uh, but before we get to to that, here's a clip from Once Upon a Time dot 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 in Hollywood. I'm Rick Dalton. That's your son? No, that's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. All right, what's the matter, partner? Line. Do you like, do you, like, are you going to go see it? Oh, totally. I think you should. Come on. But 100%. Before then, um, Brad and Margo. Mm -hmm. Super nice. Yeah. In the film, in this film. No spoilers, That's... obviously. They don't share any scenes together. Not a single oh, scene. Oh, right, okay. Oh. Uh, when you're going to interview people and it's for a film and oh. they don't actually have not worked together. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I'm kind of like, how was your day together at set? Just like, met it work. before your interview. <clears throat> but I brought up the fact that they've actually been in a film together before and also didn't share a scene together. And their reaction was... Ah, was so hold on. They've, oh they've been in two films now mm. where they're both in the cast list. Yes. But they... No haven't scenes. shared any scenes. No scenes. So technically, can can we say that they've worked? They haven't worked together. They have only on interviews with Roy Cash, yeah. but nothing yeah. else. They're ju <laughs> That's just on their just IMDb. under those yeah. circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but I point that out to them and their reaction to it. Uh, this is the second time you've been in a film together, but the second time you haven't shared mm -hmm. scenes. You you both forgotten. What you're about the Big Short. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we've never I mean, talked about. We've oh. really got to go on. Yeah, we've we got do. a couple so of topics have, of conversation. Yeah, so why do you, do you not get on? Is there reasons why you're like, I don't want I to I put do it in my contract. No, I just don't no want to yeah. actually have to share screen time with Brad. Press is okay, but, but not on God screen. forbid yeah. we act This together. is actually a first. And she, it, it's a trial thing. Gotcha. To see how it goes to <laughs> Brad, Margo, Margo, yeah. Brad. It's, yeah, it's yeah. an opportunity to do it. It's okay. I cannot believe that you, Roy Cash, can find work. No, that isn't what I was going to say originally. I was going to say, <laughs> I cannot believe that you introduced Brad Pitt yeah. and Margot Robbie to each other. Well, it seems like they didn't really know each other. <laughs> like they, again, two films. How, what are the chances? You did yeah. your research. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. They didn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't do the research. Um, um, but I see what you mean about Margot Robbie, just like, boom, she is definitely yeah. off her life. Yeah, she, uh, she's, she's a good time to chat to, as you know. Now we can naturally say. No, I'm allowed to talk yeah. about Margot Robbie, am I? Thanks. Well, it, it feeds in. Like, no, there's, no, a, like, no, there's a flow it, to it. It's, it's, there's a connection. Yeah. Between the do you two wanna, of us. Do, do you want to tell the audience about no, your goddamn connection? No, it's just like it was fortunate enough to uh, to whenever Suicide Squad was released a couple of years ago. See, just in uh, <laughs> just, I heard the story like a gazillion times. Realistic. No, the interview started, and I said hello, and she was with her co-star Jay Hernandez. Where's he now? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and just said hello, how he's getting on, and she just said, I, "I like, I like your accent," which was a lovely thing to say at the was, start. She, there was more to it than that. Yeah. We kissed. Okay. In my head. <laughs> you and <Yeah>. Jay. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Tight. Yeah. Margot uh, asked us to. <laughs> well, yeah. So when I uh, interviewed them, I brought them up. I said, a, "Well, I had to lie." I said, "A good friend of mine." Hello. Has a, a lovely Irish accent, so I lied twice. Hello. And. She, she kind of nodded and she's like, like yeah, I don't know sure, if she remembered well, did she or she is that good her, an actress. No. <clears throat> but she um, she was like, I do, I love, I love the Irish accents. Uh, and I brought up to <laughs> the fact that Brad, in the devil's own, <gasps> of course, not only rocked an Irish accent. On up, right, Jay. His character's name was Rory. <gasps> so the connections. Oh, this is phenomenal. The connections were too much to pass by. So we uh, we chatted about how difficult it is for an Irish accent to to get that right for for an actor or an mm -hmm. actress, and then it spun out and he made this fantastic revelation that um, you know what I don't want to spoil it. Oh my why, god! Why, bring it on! I know I don't want to hear Rory Cashin say it. I want to hear Brad, Brad Pitt say it. Hopefully he does the Irish accent. Then not only does Brad Brad Pitt say it, but myself and Margot have the exact same reaction to. The revelation. Simultaneously, the two of us 
is just I'm saying, is this your favorite interview ever? Every single one is. Every oh single one gosh. is. Okay. So this is Brad Pitt and his uh, highly anticipated answer. The last time someone from a, friend, a good friend of mine spoke to you, Margo, was for Suicide Squad, and he had this. He's a very lovely Irish accent, uh, and you immediately were like, "I know, I'm big sucker fan for it. I Irish love accent. the Irish accent." Did you know Brad played a character? Called I know where this Rory, is going. That is correct. And you rocked an Irish accent. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, is it something that, having done a lot of accents over your career, does it maintain to be the hardest one to get right? Um, that was probably the more extreme, but I, there's a real music to Northern Ireland that I yeah. can click into that I, that I, that I kind of adored. There's a, yeah. there's a particular lilt to it. Yeah. Is there an accent you've had to uh, address yet that you're like, this, is, this isn't easy? Uh, I think for me the most difficult ones, because I haven't done either of them yet, would be Irish and South African, but I love both of them. I love accents, I love all of them. Um, Irish is hard to But those Brad. two sound really hard <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, it's tough to well, get right. Well, he nailed that. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was a, it was, because I was watching it, uh, the scenes on the way over, it's like, it's... And I'm told my pikey, do we still use that word? Sure, for a snatch? Accent, yes, was, yeah. was, was, was uh, That's incredible. It was pretty good. That is like, I've met that person. And he sounds exactly like that, so that was... Which that is was amazing, because yeah. I was going off of a, a performance, a guest star on a Father Ted episode. Really? Really? Yes. yes. <laughs> and then a friend of mine who said, never can, I never can understand what they're saying. That's so funny. And like so I, somehow I landed in the right spot. That's fantastic. On a, on a Hail Mary. What did we just witness? Oh, is that a moment of history? history like what? Yeah. It's a landmark cinema moment. It's where cinema and TV... Finally meet. For Hollywood and Father Ted have come together. You're introducing Ho Hollywood so many and Craggy things. Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, together at last, always meant to be. Mm. So hold on a second. His character in Snatch, he based that accent on Father, on a character in Father Ted. Yeah, a, gu a guest star from Father Ted. Now I'm assuming it's uh, Pat Short. I shall say, right? Yeah. Yes. That's... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I asked someone else who who they think it might they be. think it might be, and their guess was Fred. Ooh, something Wood, the Eurovision host. Oh, yes. When he's not in front of the camera. Yes. Yeah. Of course, when he's backstage and then whenever he goes on stage, he's all like perfectly so groomed yeah. and everything as well. Yeah. yeah, but behind camera, in, incomprehensible. Those are both two great shots. I think it's... I think it's, I think I it's, it's so that's Pat basically... Short. It's one of the unbelievable space. <laughs> so yeah. John Kenny or John Pat Kenny Short. Yeah. Um, wow. That's incredible. That's an exclusive. exclusive. World breaking exclusive. news, you guys. Smash Father's head. We need, we need the breaking news thing again. Yeah, <laughs> get that on screen. Um, the fact that you, you know, that he's sitting down, Brad Pitt sitting at home watching like the Father Ted Christmas special and things like that. Is and that phenomenal. Margot Robbie knew yeah. enough about it to be like, of course, to react in that way as well. Is it really? So, oh and the fact God. he loves uh, the Irish accent as well. So thanks, yeah. Brad. Yeah, yeah signed and Margot. Um, surely you couldn't have fit in more conversation. With I fit them. in. I fit in a lot. They actually can't even fit in the entire interview in, into this into this so like I can't talk about uh, how we all talked about Tarantino's Star Trek movie amazing that came up uh, I can't talk about their mutual love for stunt workers because obviously Brad plays a stuntman in this movie so mm -hmm. I asked them who was uh, what was the best stunt performed for them in one of their previous movies Ooh. can't talk about that mm -hmm. but it's on the YouTube it's on the, it's YouTube. On the YouTube the YouTube it's up there kids on it's on the YouTube <laughs> alright granddaddy but what I, what I will talk about is the fact that Brad eats in almost all of his movies. Yeah, this is a weird phenomenon. He is a big fan of his characters eating food, which isn't something you see a lot. No. Eating, going to the bathroom. <laughs> and the two yeah. things characters tend not to do or take their feet out. And uh, Quentin has his characters with their feet out or in, in this one, eating food. Because he actually, he, he goes to town on a whole pot of mac and cheese in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So he's eating again. But I think the one that sticks in my mind the most is Ocean's Eleven because it does seem like every time always, the camera cuts to him, yeah. he has... It's always like a giant sub sandwich or something Or a burger like that. or yeah. ice cream yeah. or a nachos, I think. So I had to ask, I was like, have you seen... There's a 15-minute long mega mix of Brad <laughs> eating in movies on, you, <laughs> on the YouTube. and um, I have it bookmarked. And I asked, has he seen it? Uh, and then the conversation kind of... Margo actually takes over the conversation once okay. we bring it up. Okay. I'll, you know what? I don't Again, know. Just, let's I'll let, let the, Brad, let the, the Hollywood A-listers take it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, is this, are we about to look at the 15-minute clip of just Brad eating food? 
Yes. After. Okay. Sweet. And they'll come back to us and then we're eating food. Uh, Perfect. Beautiful. Um, have you seen the, the mega mix of... <laughs> Stop doing that thing Brad. again. Well, this actually leads nicely to, to the question. Have you seen the mega mix of Brad eating food in all of his movies? I have uh, not. No, but I have noticed that you eat food a lot in movies. Uh, you eat food in this movie. I like to busy myself. I know. I like that too when you get to do something. Yeah. It's, I... yeah but you haven't seen the footage yourself? I'm a grazer by nature. so Just keep him. In Ocean's uh -huh, Eleven, was it, did you talk about it or did you just have food always handy in a sink. I just had it. Well, it, there was actually method to that mm. because I, he was always on the run, always on the move. I figured mm -hmm. he could never sit down and have a proper meal. to have a proper meal, so he always had to grab something on the run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am not just saying the story. I am loving this interview. It's incredible. <laughs> and I want to watch the rest of it. Yeah. Please tell everybody, where can they watch the rest of it? The YouTube. The YouTube. Dot IE. Yeah, thanks for that. Idris <laughs> Elba's YouTube page. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, the full interview is up on the YouTube. Uh, a couple of stories up there, up on Joe as well. But now though, it's time for the review of Once Upon a Time, dot, 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 in Hollywood. Well placed, dots. I know. <laughs> now it's over to dot, 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 Rory Cash. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's set in 1969. Leonardo DiCaprio is nice. playing yes. a is playing a uh, an actor, struggling TV actor, who uh, he had a, a hit cowboy show. And then was like, do you know what, I'm more than this, I'm going to go be a, a film actor. Doesn't work mm -hmm. out. Brad Pitt is his stuntman who has a dodgy past. Uh, and it turns out that they live right next door. They're like best mates. He, and DiCaprio lives right next door to uh, Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate played by uh, Margot Robbie. And if anyone knows the true story of Sharon Tate, she ends up uh, one of the victims of the Manson family. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of these two parallel stories of DiCaprio and Pitt and their acting careers alongside Tate's uh, ascending stardom and how they kind of co co coalesce a little bit. Is that a right word? How they word? cross over? Yeah. How they, how they meet? How they cross paths? How their stories intertwine without, because like I said earlier, Pitt and Robbie don't actually meet. Right, okay. Uh, but how but there are connections between coexist. them. Yeah, how, because obviously Sharon Tate's story is a true story, and that's mm. mixed in with the fictional story of this cowboy and his stuntman, cowboy actor and his stuntman. Um, yeah, and, it's, and how it all mingles in then with uh, the Manson family. Right, and as you were saying, um, if we asked you in a year for one of your favourite Quentin Tarantino scenes, you mm. would pick something from this film. So yeah. does the rest of the film live up to... Obviously, that high bar that Tarantino sets in that one particular scene, um, whatever it might be. Well, kind of like by definition, no, okay. because that's the best yeah. scene. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but the best scene is from the first bit it's, to the it's last. Opening credits to the end credits. Uh, no, like it is. It's very, very mm -hmm. funny. It's it's supremely well acted. I've never seen DiCaprio play like an insecure doofus before, so it's nice to mm. see that he. Because uh, normally he's the coolest man in the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's nice to see like a different... I can relate. A, di a different shade to him. Uh, Piss should probably get an Oscar nomination. Right. I would say it's probably the best he's ever been in, in any movie. He's just... His character in this is layered like a, like a good high clue. There's a lot going oh, on yes. there. Forward to <laughs> Forward to <laughs> Nice. Oh. Uh, and people are complaining that like Margot Robbie, she doesn't have a lot of dialogue um, and that's true. She does have a fair amount of screen time and she, her version of Sharon Tate is just so, you just want to be mates with her immediately. She's just so positive and so like a big, a big like beam of joy every time she's on screen. And it, again, if you know the story of what happens to her, you're like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like it's really entertaining, really, really, well, really well made. I think maybe one of my favorite Tarantino movies, especially after Hateful Eight, where I was like, mm, yeah, mm. this is a bit self. That's brilliant. So this is self indulgent. Straight in is one of your favorites. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it's it's just it's just very very concise in, they in think the it's story a very that satisfying it's satisfying watch. Yeah, yeah, because un unlike the uh, some of the other ones where it does feel very episodic. Yeah. Uh, as you said earlier, like the the chapters and yeah. stuff, they don't. Yeah. Let, it feels like you're watching maybe a few episodes of a TV show. Whereas this, there is talk that they're going to uh, serialize it for a longer version when it comes out uh, for home entertainment. But like, it's tough to imagine 
because everything leads so naturally to what happens next. Uh, and then there's the ending. Uh, which does take place. The ending is like the ending for Sharon Tate's story. Right, okay. And mm -hmm. I can see people either absolutely loving it yeah, or like it'll be the moment where all your goodwill for the film will, will snap and you'll be like, uh, no, nope, oh, I'm out. Okay. I absolutely loved it, yeah. but I can totally understand why people will be turned off by what Tarantino did tells with the story. So you got a brilliant film the whole way and then you've got this uh, something that's clearly going to be a massive talking point at the yeah. end of the film as well. Love yeah. it. Jeekers, okay. Like obviously 100% going to see it anyway mm. and really, really excited by the trailers, by the cast, uh, by the fact it's Tarantino as well but uh, I'm sold even more now, even mm. more Rory, thanks to your beautiful interview with beautiful people and, uh, and that review as well. Okay, sweet. So It's very positive. Whew, <laughs> yeah. I feel like Sharon Tate. She's real positive, yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Real beam of light. That's our own. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't murder me. Um, so, once upon a time, dot, 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 in Hollywood. Got it. <laughs> Just have to think about it slightly every single time. Uh, is out in Omniplex Cinemas this week. Uh, it'll make a buck a load of cash. It's already doing really well um, yeah. in the States. Yeah, like I think it's one of his, his biggest uh, box office in the States already. It cost 90 million to what? make which isn't you know the Irishman 200 million yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's still a lot of money for a film that doesn't have any like, explosions in yeah it. yeah <laughs> true love them explosions um, it isn't the only release though this week we also have what else have we got Rory what else is coming up? <sighs> right guys I have a lot of moving to do <laughs> oh, okay well let's go do it quickly then well the first up is Good Boys Good Boys brand new comedy from the team behind Superbad yeah Seth Rogen Evan Goldberg three 12 year old boys skip school you know, on a mad adventure I'm gonna go Okay. See it. See the film and then come straight You can back. tell them what yeah. it's about while I'm walking off. Okay, right. See you later. Later. So as Rory crosses my... So, I don't, how are you doing? I got Consummate this right. professional. <laughs> uh, so very, very funny Red Band trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like there's going to be a lot of potty mouth fun in this. So uh, yeah, let's find out what Rory thought. Take it away, Rory. <laughs> party tomorrow. You in? Yeah. Can Thor and Lucas come? They're my best friends. We do everything together. You're so random. Two weeks into sixth grade, I'm already a social piranha. Sippy cup. Sippy cup. Does this look like a sippy cup? No. It's a f***ing juice box. Because I'm not a f***ing child. You do not want to go to Soren's party not knowing how to kiss. We could spy on my neighbor. She's a total nymphomaniac. Hey, stranger things, go f*** yourself. Closer look. What the f This is what happens when you don't respect women. I respect women. My mom's my best friend. I'm here at the Irish premiere of Good Boys. Um, and I was I was going to review it, but instead I'm gonna let the other handsome guy, not Owen, the other handsome guy who uh, has graced the bigger Bigabuski set review it for me. Good Boys is a very good movie. It's like a prequel to Superbad. Really, really funny, really enjoyable. Highly recommend it. I agree with Brian Sheen. He is absolutely right. It is hilarious. Go see it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you look who it is? Oh, yes. Sorry for the... No, listen, yeah. that was a great review of Good Boys there. Um, I can't wait to relax and sit back. And yeah, I know yeah. the seats are phenomenally comfortable. You can go check them out in all Omniplex cinemas. But Rory, uh, you're going to have to leave again. You've got one more film to review. <laughs> Dora and the Lost City of Gold. So if you wouldn't mind just fecking off and go and see that one as well. Okay. Okay. So Dora and the Lost City of Why Gold. Why can't you uh, guys go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, brand new film based on the really popular cartoon, uh, Dora the Explorer. Uh, so let's find out what, 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 what Rory thought of it. Let's take a look. You know the jungle. It's a part of you. But exploring is not a game. Uh, and you don't look before you leap. No! I'm okay, Boots. We're on to something big, Dora. An ancient city made of gold. Parapata. And your mother and I are gonna prove it. And me. I'm sorry, sweetie, you're not going. What? Being in the city around kids your own age, like Diego, might help. So you're gonna get invited to some of these parties called raves. The music sounds like this. Go get it! Be careful, that's what we wanna say. 
just out of the Irish screening of Dora and the Lost City of Gold, based on Dora the Explorer. Probably the most fun family movie I've seen in a very long time. Isabella Monaire as Dora is fantastic. Uh, Sporting cast are great, really, really funny. Yeah, surprisingly, really, really good time. Can't recommend it enough. Thumbs up here. Oh, look what the cat <sighs> dragged in. <sighs> You okay? It's exhausting. Actually, just before you make yourself comfortable, one more film to Quick go marathon. watch. Quick marathon. Yeah. No, no, that's all the films. Are you uh, sure? Thanks for that review as well. Fascinating. Ooh. So we got Eva Longoria, Michael Peña, uh, and Isabel Monner, who people will know from... Uh, Transformers. Transformers The Last Night. Yep. As well. So, uh, which... No, I was going to make a really bad daddy joke about like how the Transformers and what they got up to last night, but that's, that's not what it is. Mm. It's about like the Knights of the Round Table. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out there on that one, folks. I'm not helping. Listen, the second you bring up Daddy, I am own. checked out. <laughs> so those are the big releases out in Omniplex Cinemas this week. Uh, up now, though, we've got uh, some lovely Omniplex tickets to give away uh, as sweet, sweet prizes. Uh, all you have to do is get the answer to your haiku correct. I want to see a big... I want to see... I want to see you give a big congratulations <laughs> to Darren Dazzler, which is the greatest <laughs> name. Uh, Darren Dazzler and his Twitter handle is... Dazzler Darren. Oh. Yeah. So, so he's either he's either a porn star <laughs> yes. or a magician. Or a bit of both. A porn magician. Yeah, I'll well. take it. Where'd that uh, rabbit come from? <laughs> he, he's <laughs> uh, one himself uh, some of those amazing Omniplex tickets. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, so let's take know. a look at last week's high click. Don't know if I like amazing. <laughs> it's Saints Stone <laughs> Shot and Steals. Coffee with Corleone, Hoffa hunts Hunter. Uh, so that, for everybody who listened, uh, <laughs> why <laughs> literally leaving out letters in my words? For everybody who is listening, it's Saints is Saint apostrophe S. So that full high clue again is Saints stung, shot and steals. Coffee with Corleone, Hoffa hunts Hunter. So last week, Rory, you said this was particularly easy. Yeah. Justine, you've had a week to sit on it. Mm -mm. And you're just saying, no. Still sitting on it. <laughs> Still, mm. you're just going to... Hunter, I feel like that's going to be relevant. That's ringing a bell no. for me. Yes. Well, as we said... No. Uh, no, okay. No. Well, it, it's kind of, it no. is... Rel like no. It, it's important in a way. Not for it's Justine. Okay. Not, not for Justine. Okay. No. Uh, so we, it is a lasagna. It is layered. It's Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Dot, 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 Hollywood. Coffee. What's the most famous coffee you know of. Let me rephrase that. What's the most yeah. famous coffee in a movie you know of? Like famous, but I'm wondering, have you got it right though yet? Americano? I mean, we're talking a type of coffee? Or no, a brand? like coffee I mean, in a movie scene. I'm, you're confused me now as well. Well, hold on a wee second. Just tell us, what's the answer? Heat? Wake up it, and smell the coffee. Wake up and smell heat. That's the answer. <laughs> Great film. It is uh, heat. And I'll, coffee. I'll tell they you go for, for coffee in a really famous coffee scene. I know scene. that. I've written how it was, here. Well, you, how was what I said confusing? The way you said it, I thought you meant like a brand of coffee or a type yeah. of that's coffee. That's why I, was, or... I, was say, I said. That's why I said it. Okay. So basically, uh, so taking a look at Saints, Stung, Shot and Steals. Well, no, let's do the middle line first. Coffee with Corleone. Coffee. Uh, co <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's one it's of the, the most famous. The, shit, the shitty chocolates down the end that nobody wants. He shares it with Don Corleone. So it's, uh, it's Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, together at last, uh, and hate the first time that they had starred together in a scene. Well. Yes, because they were in scene, Godfather yes. Part 2. Like, much two. like Brad Pitt of and oh <laughs> Margot. Oh of course. They had previously starred in films um, together. Not together. So this was the two of them sitting down in the diner and having uh, the coffee. Uh, very famous scene. And Corleone. They both play... Uh, Corleone in Godfather Part 2, De Niro is Vito, and uh, Pacino is Michael Corleone. So you've got that. Seen it. On the final line... Never seen I? Godfather Part 2. Okay, yeah. we'll talk later. Um, oh my God. <laughs> never seen Hoffa, Hoffa Hunts Hunter, which had a connection to uh, our big trailer from last week, The Irishman, where Al Pacino plays Hoffa, Jimmy Hoffa in that, and he's yeah. hunting, because he's the police officer, on the hunt for the robber. Uh, hunts Hunter... Robert De Niro played the deer hunter. Uh -huh. So that was uh, that connection there. And the first line, Saints stung, shot and steals. Saint is played on the big screen by Mr. Val Kilmer. Yeah. A, yeah. What? It's a terrible film. 
Oh, the saint is? Yeah. I thought you were saying the clue was. No. Oh, okay. But basically those three things happen. He shot uh, during uh, the massively famous Michael Mann shootout scene in downtown LA. Uh, He steals because he's obviously a bank robber for a living. And he's stung because his wife gets involved in the sting operation to capture him. Is his wife Diane Lane? His wife is Ashley Judd. I always mix those two up. Yes. They're um, always running from Tommy D. Tommy they, they are. <laughs> yeah, they're always like, there's spiders, long came a spider. I thought my uh, husband was dead. The girls, all of that. Double uh, Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, all of those films on TV3 when it used to be TV3. Yeah. Um, so that was our high clue for this week, or for last week. But this week's high clue, Ready Rock, Finger Counting. Got them. We need to get that glove. We need to get the budget for a glove. We need to get a yeah. seven-fingered glove so you yeah, can really yeah, high clue it up. Freaky dicky. Uh, here it goes. Let's take a look. It's Stark and Bruce, old pals. Up to uncovering truth, hmm. strange girl follows leads. Stark and Bruce, old pals, up to uncovering truth, strange girl follows leads. Checks out. Checks out Silver Wise and Rory, I'm the eyes are... I have it. Do you think? Yeah. Now you say this every week and then we don't get to find out for a week. Give me my pen. Okay, my pen. Here's my diamond pen. Go oh. on. Let's see. Okay, let's, let's prove it then. Uh... Your big show off. Oh yeah, you got it. Okay, so Stark and Bruce, old pals. For everybody who's listening, Bruce in that uh, sentence, capital B, Stark, capital S. Uh, I got it. Uh, maybe you did. I didn't see. You've had enough it. lasagna today, all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I've got my pen back. So, uh, as I said, we've got those uh, Omniplex tickets up for grabs. Darren Dazzler has taken some of them, but hopefully that famous porn magician has left some for everybody else as Magical well. Magical porno. Coming soon next week. Look at how excited he is. Look at how excited he is. Justin, can you feel the excitement radiating can. off? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's why are you so excited, Roy? Well, <laughs> uh, way back in January. No. Don't need your life story. Way just, back just last just year. tell everybody I, why I you're so excited. I called this film. I was like, this is going to be the most fun film of 2019. And now here we are. It's Crawl. Oh my God. Crawl's here. Crawl is finally oh, here. Oh, okay, now I get why, yeah. yeah. My Hurricane Alligator yeah, movie's it's, here. <laughs> it's your jam. Rory's Hurricane yeah. Alligator movie. Um, yeah, so we're going to have the review of that next week. Cannot wait. Super duper excited. Mm. Not even about seeing the film, just about hearing your review. Yeah, um, it'll just be like two and a half minutes of me squealing at different oscillations. <laughs> yeah, so we've got, uh, so we're going from Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie to uh, Alligator Home Invasion movies. Yeah. It's just a real good time to be alive right now. <laughs> Cannot beat it. I want to say a big thank you to Justine. Oh, thanks, Justine. Yeah, thank you oh, so thank much. You. Thank you. Oh. Thank you both. Yeah, and uh, that's it for this week's show. We'll see <laughs> you. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye bye. I got my pen back, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Say thank you to Rory as well. Okay, thanks, Rory. I thanks, know. Rory, and thanks to Paul, Paul and Jeremy and Jeremid and Benny, Benny and Ian, and, and Ian. everybody, oh, and all the people. My mommy. Paul. My daddy. Yeah. <laughs> if you've seen Paul, please let like us that's know. That's two weeks now he's been drawing that yeah, up. So please, mm. Paul, buy a new one. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.